Welcome to another Sunday WOAY ABC4 Community Forum, where we talk to community leaders and local success stories to discuss important information that affects all of us here in Southern West Virginia. I'm your host, Brandi Lawrence, and today we're joined by another distinguished guest. Cindy White, who is the president of the Historic Fayette Theater's Board of Directors, joins us this morning. Thanks so much for coming to the forum. Oh, thank you for having me. It's really fun to be here. Wonderful. We're glad to have you. So uh, for the people out there that may not know, um, could you tell us about the Historic Fayette Theater? Sure. Um, the Historic Fayette Theater in Court Street in Fayetteville, West Virginia, uh, first opened in 1938, and it was a state-of-the-art movie theater and performance arts center. Um, and the first film that was ever shown there in 1938 was That Certain Age. Um, and that's the film that we are going to actually show again at our gala event, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, and then, so it was a movie theater for years, and then the theater kind of fell um, away from uh, actual movies for a while in the 70s, but in 1992, it was reopened by Tom Luisis and the Fayette County Historical Society, and they renovated the theater, and they made it possible that they could uh, perform plays there in addition to movies, and so it became an, an event center for local arts, art performing um, activities. And the first play that was ever put on on the stage when it opened up back up was in 1993 and it was Cinderella. And since that time, the theater has hosted hundreds of plays, events, concerts, um, movies, anything on our stage that's involved uh, hundreds and hundreds of local actors, singers, dancers, and even crew people of all ages all over the years. It's wonderful, you know, given, um, you know, a platform to local artists in the community. So Absolutely. that's wonderful. And, um, you know, you have a play coming up this fall, the Hitchin Post. Got to bring out the Southern West Virginia for that, not Hitching, Hitchin. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so uh, what does that entail? Okay, so the Hitchin <laughs> Post will be our fall show, um, and it is a play that takes place in Flat Rock, Texas. Um, and it's about uh, what happens in a little town um, at this general store. And so a young couple comes into the store on their way to be uh, to eloping. And so they make a stop in the general store, but a lot of fun ensues in the store. Uh, the characters are hilarious. And it's a cast of 11, and um, you'll just fall in love with them. It, it is the, one of the funniest things I've read recently and we're so excited to bring it to the stage in September. Um, the dates it will open is September 15th and 16th and then we have shows the 22nd, 23rd and 24th and you can get all that information on our website. Awesome. And tickets as well? Yes, tickets <laughs> and information, absolutely. And um, in that next month, October, you have an uh, improv comedy show coming, so. Yeah, we're super excited uh, about this. We've never done anything like this in the theater. And so we have an improv comedy group coming from Cleveland, Ohio. Um, and their name is Scriptless in Seattle, which is kind of fun, mm -hmm. a little fun take on um, Sleepless in Seattle, but they're scriptless in Seattle. So improv comedy is comedy where they just make it up as they go. Um, but they also do um, unscri their unscripted performances, like Whose Line Is It Anyway? Mm -hmm. But they do sketches and musicals, game shows. And the fun thing about this is no two shows are ever alike. So whatever the audience will prompt them with is what they will give back to the audience. So uh, we're really excited to have them come. And they're super excited to visit Southern West Virginia as well. So we're bringing some um, out of staters into our into the uh, Fayette County area. So that's really exciting. And that show is gonna be held on bridge day evening. So after you get off the bridge and you've had all your fun over there, at seven o'clock that night, Scriptless in Seattle will be at our theater at, at um, October 21st. So tickets for that are also available on our website right now. And you can learn more about them at their website, scriptlessinseattle.com. So I think it's about five or six young men who uh, just are so energetic for this kind of comedy. And I have to say, it is family friendly, clean, wonderful comedy that I think everyone will enjoy. 
Awesome. And I'm glad you brought up whose line is it anyway, because that was the first thing that I thought of when yeah. I heard improv comedy. And I know that'll be a fun time because I just I love that show. So seeing it live will be even better. I yeah, feel. and I think they even took a few things from that, um, like that was it the Irish drinking song mm -hmm. or something? You know this one. <laughs> so I think they do you know things like that. And there are several musicians in their group because I read all their bios and. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. I know we'll be the station will be a bridge day, so maybe that's something we can go and do like right after we get off. That so. would be awesome. Yeah, Thank cool. you. <laughs> and um, the anniversary red carpet gala coming up on November 4th. Um, how many years will it be for the Historic Fayette Theater? Yeah, so we are celebrating actually two anniversaries. The first one is 85 years since wow. the building opened, um, 1938. And we're also celebrating a 30 year anniversary of when we reopened and started doing plays and we started getting, you know, regular entertainment on our stage every year after year after year, except COVID, <laughs> uh, like everyone. But um, um, so, yeah, 85 years. So we are planning kind of a double anniversary, but we're really calling our 85th gala red carpet event. And so we're going to have uh, it hosted by the Gaines Estate in Fayetteville, as well as the theater. So our plans are to have, it's going to be kind of like a fundraiser because we are going to do a, a really nice evening for people. We'll start at the Gaines Estate with some nice um, hors d'oeuvres and drinks and uh, maybe some slide shows of past shows, that sort of thing, and just have a wonderful, happy atmosphere there to get started. Then we'll move the party over to the theater where we will actually be showing our first film ever that certain age. And then we'll celebrate with some champagne maybe and <laughs> some uh, presentations to people in the community have been instrumental in opening the theater and keeping it open for all these years. So uh, that is gonna be on November the 4th. Um, we'll start, like I say, at the Gaines Estate probably around six, the times aren't exact just yet. Um, and those tickets will be on sale on our website soon as well. Awesome. And will this be like a, you know, a black tie event, you know, bring out your best? <laughs> we hope to. Uh, there's been some uh, discussion about should we dress in 1938, you oh. know, vintage clothing or should we just make it like uh, Oscar night or something <laughs> like that. So yes, it will definitely be a little bit upscale uh, attire. Uh, I'm sure we won't turn anybody away if they just <laughs> want to bring a dress shirt and a tie. We'll be fine with that. But yeah, it will be a nice evening, hopefully, to celebrate our 85 years. I think that 1930s attire will be a lot of fun. <laughs> I think there will definitely be some people there, uh, especially board members who are all about that. <laughs> awesome. And um, of course, uh, before we know it, I mean, it's almost September, but before we know it, December will be coming up and for Christmas and things like that. Do you all have anything planned for a Christmas show? We actually do already have chosen our, our Christmas uh, play and it's called Rented Christmas the Musical. And this play, has a large cast of kids and adults. Um, I personally love to work with children, so I'm actually gonna direct that one. And the, um, it, it's, it takes place around the 1900s, so it goes way back. It's about a businessman who um, has never really celebrated Christmas, but he gets this bright idea that all of a sudden this year he thinks he might rent one. Um, and so he actually walks into a rent shop and tries to rent Christmas, and he wants to rent the tree. Uh, he wants to rent the carolers, everything, cookies, he wants to have it all. He even wants to rent a family <laughs> because he's a single man, which kind of is really fun. Um, the owner of the rent shop is kind of taken aback, like, whew, I've never been asked to do this. We have wheelbarrows, I mean, would that work? Uh, but anyway, it's really fun and cute. It's also a musical, so um, we actually will have auditions for that coming up Sunday afternoon, this, this Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock at the theater. And then the following Monday night at 7 p.m., in case you have ever wanted to be in a musical or get on our stage, uh, feel free to come by and audition. We'd love to have you. It's going to be lots of fun. Awesome. All right, all you artists out there, this is your opportunity. Come, you know, show your stuff. <laughs> yeah, and I'll mention the dates. Uh, we will open the Christmas show December 1st and 2nd, and the following weekend, I think it's going to be 6, 7, 8, and 9. Awesome. And you said that this would be um, one of the first shows that you direct. So what was that experience? Okay, yeah, it's my fourth time directing and I And I found that I gravitate toward plays that have children in them because I really enjoy watching the progress that they make from the day we start to the day that we open. And 
Um, it's always been just a love of mine to work with kids. So directing has its challenges, um, but I love it probably better than being on the stage. Actually, I think I've found my uh, passion there, but um, a lot of times people come in with their own ideas and then you have to work with your actors and, and things like that. And directing is, is big because you have to, all of it on your shoulders. It's just not your lines and your, you know, as an actor, it's the set, it's the programs, it's the publicity, it's all of it. And so it's a big job, but I, I really enjoy it. Awesome. And you must feel really proud, you know, like when it's finally showtime and you get to watch, you know, all the hard work. Absolutely. So proud. The cast of The Hitchin Post has done an amazing job and on all the casts have. Um, you're a little nervous, <laughs> you know, because you want it to be perfect. It's not always perfect. That's the beauty of live theater as well. Um, I don't want to say it's a different show every time because we rehearse, rehearse, rehearse and we get it, you know, but things happen in live theater and that's the beauty of it. Um, so anyway, it's it's going to be it's lots of fun. Awesome. Sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. And um, well, I'd love to ask since it's community forum, um, are you all in need of any volunteers or any help? Absolutely. We actually have um, um, contact card in our programs. And so you can actually, you know, fill it out if you want to receive our um, emails and want to receive our updates of what's going on in the theater. You can give us your email address. You can also check a box on like to volunteer and you can say how. We have volunteers that are greeters with every show and they just show up to pass out programs so the board members don't have to do it, the cast doesn't have to do it, and we just have community people volunteer all the time just to show up an hour before our show and pass out the programs and greet our patrons, which is a lot of fun. Uh, always looking for help with set construction. If you have any skills with tools, that would be a fantastic uh, way to help out at the theater. Uh, we do a lot of cleanup at the theater, cleanup days, We'd love to have help on those days cleaning out the costume room or the prop room or we just renovated pretty much um, all new carpeting and paint back in the spring in March and, and new curtains. And so we have a beautiful new space that really needed cleaned up. That took a lot of volunteer work too to, to get that done. Um, so yeah, we are always in need of volunteers and we'd love to have people come by and help out. And um, we're about to go to our first break, but before we go, do you mind plugging the phone number and the website so they can find you Absolutely. Um, FayetteTheater.com is the website. All this information is on there and a place to contact us as well. Um, and the phone number is 304-574-4655. And there's not always someone there to answer, but you can leave a message and we will always get back to you. So all you handy people out there, anybody that's interested in getting involved in the community, you guys reach out to them and, you know, be a part of, you know, some art. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. And we are going to go on our first break, but stay tuned. I will be right back with Cindy White, president of the board of directors for the historic Fayette Theater, talking more about what they have coming up. Welcome back to Sunday's Community Forum. I'm here with President Cindy White of the Historic Fayette Theater's Board of Directors, and we're talking about everything that the uh, theater has coming up. So um, we were talking a little bit about the spring music. It's not all the way there yet, but it's something you all do every year. So. Yeah, every year we have a spring musical, and it is one of our biggest shows. Um, last year's spring musical sold out two performances like we had to turn people away at the door it was a very popular wonderful show wagon wheels west if anyone saw it directed by sharon bibb and it was amazing um it had a cast of 39 people and so our stage is not that big but to put that many people on stage was remarkable um everyone loved it the community loved it the cast loved it it was wonderful um and we've been doing that spring musical for almost you know 30 years or more so it's always a very popular event, so the, um, we have not chosen our spring musical, but you can be guaranteed it will be there. Uh, it's very popular, lots of kids involved in that one, usually all ages, so that's always a musical, always <laughs> fun. You gotta sing, you gotta dance, so if you wanna be involved in that, you have to be willing to, to get out there and, and sing and dance a little bit, but it's super fun. Coming up probably March or April. Awesome. And what is the process, you know, for kind of choosing a musical? 
It's up to the director. Um, you know, we read a, a bunch of scripts, and they come across, and they, um, you know, we just look at them and say, what are we trying to say? What you, who do we want involved? How many people might be available? Just all sorts of things. But really, we always choose family-friendly events and plays um, that because I think that's what our community loves to see. And then um, we just decide, you know, maybe we'll, last summer we actually did a very, uh, a little dark play because we wanted to be diverse and we wanted to, um, you know, offer programming for everyone. Um, and so that was, that was something we did last summer. Um, and then we might do a little bit more serious one, maybe on the books next year might be Mr. Lincoln, which is a one man show about Abraham Lincoln. We're thinking about that. So we're really trying to offer all kinds of uh, plays that will interest everyone. Um, but we have found that the musicals and the comedies uh, and the Christmas shows are the most popular ones, uh, we feel. So yeah, we just read scripts and, and say, that was funny, I laughed out loud, let's do this one, <laughs> kind of thing. I think it's a, a wonderful way to you know get people out so they can kind of forget about everything else going on for a while and just laugh and Absolutely. have some fun. And I find it more um, more intimate to actually be there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so that'll be nice. Yeah. And um, you know, speaking of uh, local, um, you were talking about a documentary in Possible Town that you are trying to get to show at the theater. Yeah. So we have had people reach out to us. I wanted to use our theater for films. Um, we actually showed a film called Fever uh, back ooh, in the spring. Um, and it was a, a bouldering film, like it's kind of like rock climbing, and the place was packed because, you know, our area does have a lot of rock climbing and things like that. People were super interested. Um, it was a wonderful event, and so um, that was a lot of fun. And we also showed recently a documentary called Picture Proof, which is about drug abuse and how it affects families. So uh, we love it when people reach out to us and want to use our theater for those, um, you know, those events. Um, and we have one coming up, we think, we're in the process of firming up a date, um, and it's a documentary called Impossible Town, and it's about the town of Minden, West Virginia, and how the residents there have suffered with health issues uh, from things like uh, cancer-causing chemicals they believe to be down there, and, and Dr. An Amjad has been instrumental in trying to help the residents, whether that's relocating or just really working hard to get the word out that the people of Minden you know, have suffered. So we're working with them to sure up a date for that film to be shown called Impossible Town, probably the end of September, 1st of October. But we want to have it, they want to have it in our theater, so we love partnering with uh, uh, people like this that want to put on, uh, you know, wonderful information for the community. And you know, we're not that far from Minden too, so I'm sure that, you know, a lot of people will love to know what's going on there, and maybe even someone watching will want to help in some type of way. Absolutely. You know, and the resource. film, I just watched the trailer and the film will give people a way to help out if they'd like to. That's wonderful. So hopefully that'll be on our schedule soon. Well, so well, we will definitely keep track and try to, you know, get the word out for Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Thank no you. Problem. And um, I know you said that you loved uh, working with the kids and um, you mentioned something about a drama camp. Okay. Yeah. So this past summer we brought back our drama camp. Um, we had ages 7 to 15. We had 22 kids um, come to our camp, and it was a wonderful week. Um, a lot of work, but they thrived. And the kids who were so nervous and so shy to get on stage, and they thought, this will be a good thing. You know? And it was amazing, because at the end of the week, we put on two plays, one for the younger kids and one for the older kids, that they learned in four days. So I was, you know, first day going, uh-oh. And the second day I went, Okay. <laughs> and by the third day on Wednesday, I was like, these kids, they got it. Um, so I didn't underestimate them at all. Um, and I was really, really proud of them. Uh, so that's a, you know, people are, we asked for feedback from the parents of the kids. They said, please, please keep doing this. It was a wonderful event. So we hope to make that even bigger next summer. So we'll be holding out for a drama camp next summer. Awesome. So, so what are the uh, age ranges there? 7 to 15. We split it uh, 7 to 10 and then 11 to 15 so that we could kind of gear, you know, what we were teaching them a little bit more to their age level. Um, because the younger kids, of course, can't, you know, memorize as quickly as the older kids. And the just the plays that we chose were, you know, geared more toward younger kids versus the older kids. And it was a great mix. In the past, our drama camps have been... Um, 
like um, monologues or something like that. This year we just decided to try something different, see if we could learn two plays in a week. And we learned two plays in four days. So <laughs> I was very, very happy with the turnout and uh, the big night where they had their performance for all their parents. It was, it was super fun. It yeah. sounds fun. Yeah. And do any of the kids, you know, from drama camp, do they ever, you know, join the theater? In so that was something that was kind of exciting this year is um, of the 22, only six had ever been on our stage. So this is brand new kids just wanting to break out. Some of them had done a few like church plays, you know, or uh, maybe a school play or something small, but had never been on a theater stage. Uh, and just to see them uh, under the lights was pretty exciting. And we also let them like make their own costumes the whole week. They built their own sets. And so they got to see all aspects of theater and being part of it. So it was wonderful. Yeah. And I think, I think one of the dads from one of the kids reached out to us and said, tell me about auditions for the Christmas show. Tell me about the rehearsal schedule. So I do know at least one of the kids is interested in auditioning for the Christmas show. So, That's wonderful. Yeah, I can't wait. It's a really uh, well-rounded experience. So maybe one of them will want to direct next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're always looking for directors as well. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be great. Awesome. Um, and this is a free camp or is it no, a fee? No, there's or? a charge because we order t-shirts and, and there's a lot of cost in the supplies. We supply the snacks. Uh, so it's $75 for the week and we ran it from 9.30 to 3. Um, that, like I said, includes all supplies we did. Um, like they made masks for their one of their plays. What was their costuming? They made vests that they sewed together. We bought, you know, the um, materials for those kinds of things. So there was some cost incurred to us. So we passed that on a little bit. So seventy-five dollars for the week. That's good. Yeah, that's right. So um, you know, in a perfect world, uh, what would you love to see happen next for the historic theater? Like oh wow. <laughs> okay, you're saying I can dream. Okay, so we we really would love to have new chairs in our theater. Um, the chairs that are in there now were donated. Uh, we're not even sure what year, but maybe 30 years ago, and they weren't in good shape then, so they're uh, not in great shape now. So we'd love to see new chairs in our theater. We also would like to uh, have brand new stage curtains. We have curtains in the back that we put up um, in March, but we have the very large stage curtains that need replaced. They are uh, in, in, in bad shape. Um, the riggins that pull the curtains, that needs to be replaced. That's old and outdated and doesn't work really well. We make it work, but we would love to see that. We'd also like to, or you asked, I'm going <laughs> on my dreams here. Um, we'd also like to even out the stage because when it was a movie theater, it was just a square rectangular stage. And when we opened it for plays, we needed to expand it. But we didn't expand it evenly. It was like jutting out here, and so it's not even. We'd love to have a, a nice, stage area so we have big 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 plans for the theater we'd also love to have a concession area where we can often offer concessions you know and intermissions and things like that we have a back corner where we try to do it but it's not ideal so uh, we would love to update and upgrade the theater and we have lots of plans for it awesome i love to ask that question because i feel like it's in a way it kind of manifests like a manifestation, you know, where people say like, well, if I say it and I really believe in it, then it'll happen. So I'm hoping that that's what happens with Community Forum, so. Yeah, and also <laughs> one of my personal dreams, and I haven't even shared this with the board yet, so it's <laughs> a surprise. I would love to see a children's theater. Oh, that would be nice. Thanks. I would love to have one show a year dedicated to only kids. I know other areas do it, and I think that would just be something that, um, just seeing the interest in our drama camp, I would love to offer that someday. That's something that I would like to put on the books if we could. Awesome. So hopefully, since we've put it out in the universe, yeah. it'll happen. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and um, I think you mentioned a little bit about donations there. Um, are you all accepting donations or need any donations? Or is there any way that the community can really get involved to help the theater? Absolutely. Um, I think there is a link on our website where you can donate. Um, you can also just send checks into our post office box for four, eight at Fayetteville. And that's on our website. Um, if you would like to donate. Um, so we, we do encourage and support and love when people help donate your time, or your funds. Uh, there's always things we can do at the theater with any kind of donations. And the, the place that we put on, you know, we have to pay royalties and there's costs incurred with set production and stuff like that. So we actually do go out and reach out to sponsors for our plays. And then we advertise in our program for their business. Um, we've had some awfully gener generous sponsors 
um, in the past, and so that's always something that we appreciate very, very much because that helps offset some of the cost. Um, so yeah, any way you want to help out, go to the website, FayetteTheater.com, and you can certainly uh, find a way to help us and donate. I mean, we really appreciate it. Awesome. Well, you guys support the arts and, you know, donate to the Historic Fayette Theater. And um, I'm going to ask, how, have, how is the arts in the theater really, you know, inspired and, you know, changed you oh, in wow. your life? <laughs> yeah, so first my kids got into theater before I did. I've got five children and they all five have been on the stage at the theater. And um, I was busy raising little ones, so until my youngest got to be six, seven, eight, I didn't think I could, you know, get away from all that. But they all loved the confidence that being in the plays gave them. And um, two of my children actually went on to do improv comedy, uh, one in college and one just um, when she was working in Boston, she got involved in Boston Improv. and. So a couple of my kids, and I know that that all started from what they experienced at the Fayette Theater and on the stage there. Um, they got their confidence, they got their love of, you know, there's nothing like getting a laugh from an audience when you deliver a line well, and it's funny, and it feels amazing and brings joy to the audience, and, and they just carry that on through their lives. As, uh, you'll talk to so many of our past actors who've gone on and said, wow, you know, what I experienced on the stage and what the theater brought to my life was just, uh, has carried me through, all the way through. So it's wonderful. For me personally, I, uh, I just, I love it. I just, I just absolutely love it. I think about it all day, every day almost, and it's, uh, it's just been a, a real joy for me. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for coming to the forum with us today. Yeah. And thank you all for joining us as well. Be sure to tune in next week where we speak to another distinguished guest about everything important here going on in Southern West Virginia. Thank you all so much and have a happy Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.